Despite having the worst reviews on Newegg and Amazon, we suspected that the MSI 1080 Ti Armor card might secretly be an actually good PCB. The card seems to have a GTX 1070 cooler stuck onto the 1080 Ti GPU and 1080 Ti Gaming X PCB, and so if that's the case, we would be able to modify it and turn the card into one of the best liquid cooling candidates of the 1080 Ti class, as it is priced at $700 and seems to carry a custom PCB. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by ifixit.com and the PC Essentials Toolkit, which can be had for $20, making it one of their cheapest yet most complete toolkits. Use code GAMERSNEXUS for $5 off to bring that to 15. You can go to ifixit.com slash GAMERSNEXUS or click the link below for more information. So we bought the 1080 Ti armor out of pocket for 700 bucks from a retailer, found that it had this GTX 1070 cooler on it with maybe some very minor changes, but nothing significant enough to make it suitable for a 1080 Ti card. And upon removing the cooler, we found that it is actually a Gaming X PCB, a card that we reviewed and liked for the most part. It's got a good cooler on it, the Twin Frozer cooler on the Gaming X, and it's got a good PCB. Bill Zoid did an analysis on our channel where he talks about all the components on the PCB. They have not changed on this one, aside from some minor changes to things like the LDO and some fan control stuff. But overall, this is a Gaming X PCB for $50 cheaper, which makes it sort of like a secret purchase for liquid cooling enthusiasts. If you're not liquid cooling this and you're going to use it in this configuration, it's a terrible thing to buy, and we'll show you why through this video. If you are planning to modify it, however, like we did with this Kraken G12 bracket and just a 570LC we had lying around, then it's one of the best candidates for liquid cooling that you can get because you get a good custom PCB and you get it for $700 and then you just put this off to the side somewhere, throw it out, whatever. It doesn't really matter at that point. This is as close as you can get to just buying a bare PCB with no cooler attached to it. Obviously some disassembly required. So we'll go through the numbers here. We're gonna talk about why in its stock state this thing is so bad at what it's doing on this particular card and why all of those reviews that you've seen on Newegg and Amazon, if you've looked at this card, tend to be negative almost always along the lines of thermals and noise. Starting out with stock configuration testing, we have our thermal over time chart for the stock 1080 Ti armor card from MSI prior to our liquid cooling mods with the NZXT G12. Out of box, the 1080 Ti armor runs a GPU temperature of around 77 to 78 Celsius when left to its own devices. This triggers a fan speed of about 80%, corresponding with a noise level of 46 dBA. We'll talk about that more later. At this noise level, MSI has managed to assemble one of the worst performing cards in both noise and thermal categories in our tests. And they've done so only by sticking an underqualified heatsink on the 1080 Ti armor. If we look at VRAM temperatures, we're rapidly nearing 90 Celsius on the measured GDDR5X module near the power components. Measuring the hotspot MOSFET in the center of the VRM, we see a temperature output of around 71.2 Celsius. Not too bad. Let's look at a GNEQ chart to get a better idea of where things land. Here's a comparative chart of GPU temperatures. The Armor card is the worst of the AIB partner models on the bench at 77 Celsius, with the NVIDIA Founders Edition card performing against the thermal limit point at 84C before it starts to limit the clock. This sustained 77 Celsius temperature requires a noise output of about 46 dBA out of the MSI Armor card, whereas the Founders Edition card is running a 45 dBA noise output with its auto configuration and 84C temperature. Although this is not great, it shows that the AIB partner models aren't just magically better. To give an idea for efficiency versus noise here, the ASUS Strix with its 64.8 Celsius temperature is maintaining this with a noise output of about 38.6 dBA, so that's nearly a 2x perceived decrease in noise with a 12 Celsius reduction in GPU temperature. Again, those things don't normally coincide. We're getting a decrease in noise by roughly two times as a human perceives it, while also getting a temperature reduction. Big deal there. The SC2 non-ICX model can be had for around $720 or $20 more than this armor card and would operate at the same temperatures as the ICX model we're seeing here with the difference being no MCUs and fixed fan speeds for both fans. That puts us at around 69 Celsius load against its 40.2 dBA noise output for this temperature, another non-trivial reduction over the armor. The armor does okay though in some testing, like power temperatures, in that it lands about center of the pack, as you can see in our power temperature chart. 
This is expectedly similar to the Gaming X, the other MSI card using the same PCB other than a couple of minor tweaks. But now let's take a look at how things go with the fans fixed for a 40 decibel output on these tested devices. Note that we're going to be using delta temperature measurements in this chart, hence the lower temperature numbers overall, that's just because they're delta temperature over ambient. Configuring the coolers to not exceed 40 dBA places the MSI 10 ATI armor card at 58.6 Celsius delta T over ambient, which is the hottest device by a long shot. The next hottest device at this fixed DBA is the FTW3, which runs 16 Celsius cooler than the Armor for GPU temperatures at the same noise level and 11 Celsius cooler power component temperatures, though they use different VRM designs. And then we see another 8 Celsius reduction on the VRAM temperatures when measuring the same module that's placed near the power components. And all of this means that even with the auto settings giving us 80% fan speeds at 45 to 46 DBA on the MSI Armor, will still throttle the clock with the stock MSI Armor cooler. Here's a look at that throttling. This frequency versus temperature and time chart is produced using the higher auto fan speeds. The blue line represents the stock MSI Armor card, which dips hard right out of the gate, falling in this power virus scenario from 1630 MHz to 1520 MHz, about a 100 MHz reduction in the worst of times. Again, this is a power virus, so we're not enumerating the clock in the same way as a gaming application would, Fortunately, we also have those results. Here's a look at superposition as benchmarked over a 30 minute burn in period. As the card heats up and it starts hitting north of 70 Celsius within just one minute of testing, by the way, we immediately drop clocks. This means that we're losing frame rate, slowing down as time goes on and heat rises. And you can see that in this chart as the frequency dips over time and temperature rises. And just to really drive things home because MSI often challenges criticism of their products, we can look at a frame rate reduction over time in this next chart. This performance was logged over about an hour of looping Metro Last Light benches. We have more than 64,000 rows of data for this particular benchmark, and that's just for the frame time numbers, not the thermals. And we see a performance degradation as the clock drops and thermals rise. It may not be a huge loss in performance, nothing game ruining, certainly, and really nothing you would complain about in real time. However, it's an unnecessary loss. You don't need to lose that performance. Seen as the Gaming X doesn't experience the same performance degradation with its superior cooling, there's no reason that this one should because of the same PCB, just with, again, worse cooling. So that's why you get that reduction in performance over time. Back to the power virus chart, though, we can fix that frequency fall off by putting a better cooler on there. Let's do what makes the most sense and use something like a Kraken G12 with an Ace Tech 570LC that we had and an EVGA hybrid fan on that liquid cooler and then see how frequency responds. So that's much better. We're now holding nearly a perfectly flat frequency trend. In fact, this is almost identical to the frequency line we see with the Gaming X that has the twin Frozer cooler, which we can plot now. The Gaming X clock aligns with the G12 and CLC clock on the armor, telling us that provided equal cooling, the cards are in fact equal. Again, this is a power virus scenario, but the whole point is to stress the thing and see how temperatures do and the clocks in this scenario between the Gaming X and the liquid-cooled armor are basically the same. Plotted over time, it's easy to see how much faster the liquid cooler soaks the temperature increase and how much lower the GPU, FET, and VRAM temperatures are overall. The GPU temperature goes down from 77 Celsius to just over 40 Celsius, with FET temperatures falling from around 71C to around 53C, and VRAM temperatures also drastically reduced. Here's a GN EQ chart with the noise controlled to 40 dBA. We're at around 22 Celsius delta T over ambient on the liquid cooled version of the card, down from around 58.6 Celsius delta T, and significantly reduced on VRAM and FET temperatures once again. If you're curious about noise from the stock cooler, here's one last look at that. This is a plot of the noise over fan speed ranging from 40% to 100% fan speeds, showing a pretty stable increase in noise with each 10% RPM hike. We've also got a comparative noise chart in the article if you'd like to see how this compares to other cards. And keep in mind that the GPU, when it is fixed with the stock cooler, tends to sit around 80% fan speed and almost never goes above that. Instead, it will reduce the frequency. And as always, there's a lot more in the article. We've got some FPS numbers in there just to give a baseline of how the differences look on the liquid cold versus the stock cold versions. Not a huge difference, but enough of one where again, you kind of scratch your head and say, why would they do this to themselves? We also have some extra noise info there, temperature info, things like that. But to kind of recap things here, what we have is a really peculiar video card. If you were to buy this card, 
with no intention to mod it and you want to leave that cooler on it, I would tell you don't. There are plenty of better options that will cool better, be priced similarly or the same, and you're not going to lose out on performance. In fact, you might have better performance because you're not going to be thermally limited. And in the very least, you'd have better noise performance, which is never a bad thing. Now, the one place that this is peculiar, as I said, is because unlike other products where we might say don't buy it, period, end of story, this one still has some good purpose. And that would be if you wanted to buy it and mod it. So if your plan is to buy something like the Gaming X because you like the PCB or you like something about it other than the cooler, you could actually buy this instead, get more or less the same thing, sans LEDs and fan controls, which the fan controls are relevant anyway if you're liquid cooling it, and stick a liquid cooler on it, and you save 50 bucks off of the MSRP because you're going down from a Gaming X to this, which is a Gaming X PCB, and then you can put that money towards your liquid cooling setup. The one place this gets weird, though, is if you are... Uh, if you don't have specific liquid cooling plans or anything like that, then basically you might as well just buy the Gaming X between the two options of Armor Plus Liquid Cooling and Gaming X because Armor Plus Liquid Cooling is still going to cost you more than the 750 of the Gaming X. However, we've reviewed plenty of other cards, so we've got full roundups. The most recent one for you to check would be our Asus Strix video card review because that one contains all the data for all the other 1080 Ti's we reviewed, so that would give you a full picture of everything sort of in the $750 plus dollar market. But the Armor card overall, basically uh, our conclusion is don't buy it if you're gonna use it stock because the cooler is no good. And if you want to mod it, it's a fantastic candidate for liquid cooling. If MSI could sell this thing without a cooler, it seems that they would because that's basically what this already is. You're, they're selling it with a cooler that should be removed and discarded and then you put your own on there and you've got actually a pretty good card. So that's all for this one. We picked up this card because of the interesting reviews on Newegg and Amazon. As always, if any of you see stuff like that, feel free to tip us off. You can tweet at us at GamersNexus with news tips or other things, review requests, things like that. Subscribe, go to patreon.com slash GamersNexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our shirts. I'm wearing a vintage model, but you can get newer ones on the store. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you all next time.